to create a folder in Outlook using Power Tomate, you would need to make use of a send an HTTP request action. And you pass in the following values. So you're going to be making use of a push request to this endpoint. And you pass in the request body as follows. So the display name will be this, and you set the is hidden folder flag to be false. Now, all of this information is available in the API documentation as seen here. So you can see here, this is the HTTP request and the body. So this is an example. So it's an HTTP request to this endpoint, set the display name and set the is hidden. If you set it to be true, it means you'll be able to see the folder you created on Outlook UI. But if you set it to be false, it means that you'll be able to see it. So let's test this flow. So basically, the Compose is holding the folder name I want to use, or rather I want to create, and I'm passing it in here as a variable. So we save and we test. So I'm going to bring up my Outlook, and you see it has been created. So this is basically how to create a folder in Outlook using say the HTTP request. With the information found in the API documentation, you can go so many layers um, further. Take for example, this flow I built. So this flow creates two levels of folder. So it creates the first level in the root directory, then it creates another folder underneath that um, folder initially created. So it's like two levels deep. Um, no, sorry, in this case, it's going to be a level deep. So the parent folder and a subfolder. So in this case, I can name the parent folder second test folder 2025 and the subfolder I want to create in it. Let me name it test child folder one. Okay, so this flow, all it does is um, it initializes the name of the folders I want to create, the parent and the child folder. Then it sends a HTTP request to get the list of all existing folders I have in my Outlook account, but it filters it based on the display name of the parent folder. Now, the essence of this filter is to find out if the parent folder I intend to create already exists, because if it already exists, if I try to create it again, I'm going to get an error. So basically, this just gets, this just checks if the folder exists or not. Now, if it exists, rather than creating the folder, I am just going to retrieve the parent, the, the ID of the folder. Now, the reason why I need to retrieve the ID of the folder is because in the API documentation, to create a child folder, you need you need to have the ID of the parent folder, the child folder is going to be um, underneath it. So I need the ID of the parent folder in order to be able to create a child folder under it. So with that in mind, I'm going to retrieve the parent folder ID, then I'm going to set it as a variable. So I'm initializing a variable here at the start of the flow called parent folder ID. The reason why I'm initializing the variable there is that regardless of where I get the ID from, either by getting it from an existing folder or instead creating the parent folder using the same method I used earlier. So if I create a folder using the method I used earlier, I'm still going to have to retrieve the ID. So basically this two is, um, basically this set variable is um, setting the, the ID of the parent folder into that variable. Then I'm going to pass in that parent folder ID to create the um, child folder. So this whole method, you can still um, take it even further to create more, more layers of um, subfolders. So you can go two, three levels deep. You just need to just follow the same logic where you check if a folder exists, if it exists, get the ID. If it doesn't exist, create it and still retrieve the ID. So let's test this. So like I said, parent folder, name, then child folder. So test. Okay. So you see second test folder and you can see test child folder. Now let's see the parts, the process took when it ran. So this is the part the process took while it ran. So you can see it checked to see if the folder exists. So it didn't exist, so it created a new one, created a new folder, which is here. Got the ID, we used it to create the subfolder we intended. So now let's test it with an existing parent folder. So in this case, the second test folder already exists. So what I'm going to do in this case is rather than creating a new folder, I'm just going to create a new test folder. So this would be test child folder. So now if I test this, So you can see it created the second folder immediately. So let's see the parts the process took. So in this case, we know the folder already exists. So instead of creating a new one, it checked, found it existed. So it just retrieved the ID of the existing folder and passed it into the request to create a new folder. So that is how to create folders and create parent and child folders using the send and HTTP request action in part of it.